Reason 10 just dropped today, so I thought I would put together a tutorial to get anyone started who is new to the software, or if you have been using it for a little bit, but you're struggling to find your way around and would just like a somewhat short introduction on how to navigate and get started with creating your own music. And I'm going to try to keep this to under 30 minutes and cover as much as I can. That's going to help you get going, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so let's just go ahead and start with this is what we should all see if you have just installed and you haven't made any changes to the preferences settings. And uh, this is going to be the default template and color theme that you're going to see when you uh, open Reason 10. Now we can come to this is going to be one of the first areas that we take a look at here. So let's come to our edit and then preferences up above there. And then within the preferences window here, we are going to take a look at the general tab. And what I want to mention is the default song here. So by default, it's going to be on template and the empty plus effects reason demo. I usually like to start with empty because I prefer kind of starting with a blank slate. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. We also have CPU usage limit, which is going to be at 85%. You can also adjust that as well. Uh, we then have our theme, which does require require a restart. It's going to be on default by default. I am a fan of the dark theme, so I'm going to go ahead and select that, and we're going to restart, restart in a second. We then need audio for our Reason 10. So this is where we can choose our audio device. Now, in order for me to capture audio from uh, reason I need to use my built-in audio and uh, but I do have an Osio audio interface that I can click this drop-down menu and select and make that adjustment there now notice that I my active input channels are zero out of zero here and my uh, buffer size is really high if I were to change this to the Osio device notice that immediately the buffer size is less and I now have two input channels available to me if you are on an audio device that has, say, eight channels or more, you can always click on the channels buttons there. Those will not be gray like mine are. You'll be able to click those and then activate any additional channels that you'd like to set up to use within Reason. Now, we also have a control panel button, and we can click that to access additional controls for our audio device. What you will see will vary depending on the model that you're using. Uh, this is just what's available for the Scarlet Solo. And we have something for sample rate, buffer size, and uh, input and output latencies. I'll just go ahead and cancel out of there, though. And we'll next look at the sample rate, which we can adjust here. And this is basically going to be determined by or limited by whatever your audio device is capable of handling. So for mine, I can go up to 96 kilohertz, uh, although I typically will record in 44.1 or 48. And, you know, that's a debate about what the best sample rate is to use, so I'm not going to go there. Just know that the higher your sample rate, the more processing, uh, the more intensive it's going to be on your processor. Now, with the buffer size, this is basically going to determine kind of your latency and or the delay in the time that it takes from when you, say, press a key on your MIDI keyboard until you hear back the audio. So with higher values, you're going to uh, have more of a delay and it's going to be impossible to play a part live. So you really want to, if you're going to be recording MIDI parts live or monitoring a vocal recording with reverb, for instance, you want to have that as low as possible. And typically 128 samples and below is going to give you uh, the best performance. Um, as, as low as possible is really best for recording live performances. Now I'm going to go ahead and just switch this back to my uh, built-in audio because we're going to get to making some sounds in a minute here and I want to be able to record those. I'm going to go ahead and leave my buffer size really high here. And next we'll move on to control surfaces. Now Reason has an auto detect surfaces so you can always just click this button. First you want to be sure that you install the drivers for your MIDI controller, connect the device, open up Reason, and then go ahead and choose Auto Detect. It will scan your system to see if it can locate those drivers. Now I've got an Impact LX25 Plus set up, 
although I do need to come in and make some tweaks to get this working properly, we don't want to have those exclamation points. That means that there's some sort of conflict here. But at any time, you can select uh, your controller and um, by clicking once there and then just choosing edit and then you can make adjustments there. Now I'll go ahead and close this out and I'm going to go ahead and restart Reason to make th those changes take effect and we'll come right back in a second here. Okay, now we're cooking with grease. We've got the dark theme going and this opens up into the empty uh, version. And so we're going to start again. This is this is for newbies. So we're going to start with the very basics here and finding your way around and making sense of what's going on here. And there are several main areas that you need to be aware of. And that is the rack, our sequencer, the browser and our mixer. And our mixer is closed by default. We can see these named up above mixer rack sequencer. Now we have function keys where we can access each one of these. So our uh, browser, we can show and hide by pressing F3. Uh, our rack, F6. And our sequencer is F7. And our mixer is F5. And just know that with the mixer, we do have this arrow where we can click that arrow to detach. If we have a second monitor, we can drag that over and have a bit more real estate when we're working with the mixer. If we'd like to close that down, we just hit the X and it's now reattached. Now the same is true with the rack. So if I press F6 and access the rack, we can see we have the arrow there as well. We can detach that. And now we have a full working mode for that. And so say we could have the uh, sequencer open on one window and the rack maximized in this other one. Now I'll go ahead and close that back. We also have this mode where we can view all three at the same time. Now, if I press F6 to bring up the rack, I can press F5, 6, and 7, and then that way we see all three at the same time. We can also do F6 and F7 to show the rack and sequencer, or F5 and F6 to show the rack and mixer. Now, I will F6 to bring the rack up, and let's go ahead and start with taking a look at the browser really quickly because this is where everything's going to begin. This is where we can access our instrument palette, our effects palette, our utilities, and our players, which are for working with MIDI. We also have our Reason 10 sounds, which are here, our orchestra sounds, which is going to give you strings, woodwinds, percussions, mallets, etc. Our factory sounds, where you can find loops, you can find combinator patches. Uh, we've got our drum supply, which is new to Reason 10. So uh, we can instantly access those sounds here. And we actually have the individual samples that we can access and load those into individual pads within Kong, for instance, or uh, Red Drum. We've got rack extension patches that we can access here. We can access our directory, our, our system directory here on this PC. And then we can choose to access our desktop song samples. This will uh, provide you access to any samples that you may have recorded within your song and uh, recent patches. And then we have an area for, we can set up favorites here to uh, have, say if we have a folder of drums on our hard drive, we can set that up, just navigate to that area. We can click the plus symbol here. And I'm just going to call this example, press enter. And now we can navigate to a particular area and then a folder rather drag that folder and uh, place it there to our favorite and I'm just going to go ahead and right click on that and then delete that okay and we'll come back up to the instruments now how can we get started creating music we've already set up our audio interface we've set up our MIDI controller so what if we want to start working on drums well, all we need to do is simply click on the Kong Drum Designer, drag it into our rack. There's a kit that's automatically loaded, so I'll start playing some pads on my MIDI controller. And so we're in business there. Now, if we wanted to record, our tempo here is set to 120, 120 BPM. We can always click there and type in a value. We can also use the minus or plus keys on our numeric keypad 
to change those one number at a time. We could also use the tap feature here to click repeatedly and type in or tap in a tempo that we may have in our head or if we're trying to match to another song. I'm going to use the key to take that down to say one, uh, 110. Now we've got our click track here that will help us keep our uh, rhythm of course while we're playing back. We can activate that by clicking once on the click there or we can press C on our QWERTY keyboard. Now we can press the asterisk key on our numeric keyboard to begin recording or we could also use control and enter. So I'll go ahead and control enter. Press the space bar to stop. Now we wanna see what our recording looks like. How can we work with it? I'll F3 and close out the browser for a moment and then F7 to open up the sequencer. Now we can see we've got a clip here. This contains all of our MIDI data from the uh, recording that we just did. Now within the sequencer, we can zoom in on these tracks vertically. You know, it's a bit hard to see the MIDI data if we're working with multiple tracks at a time and we'd like to see a bit more of what's going on. We can just use the plus or minus magnification down here below. So I'll click the plus. We could also hold down control and alt and use the plus key on our numeric keypad or the minus to zoom out. So we can now see a bit of our MIDI notes there and we don't have any information recorded there. So we can come to the beginning of our clip, drag that in and then come to the end and drag that in as well. And if you notice that that's snapping by bar, we've got our bars in our timeline, our ruler up above, we begin on bar three and end in bar five. So the reason why that's snapping by bar is because our snap is turned on. We can click that button to disengage or press S on our QWERTY keyboard to engage or disengage. And we have bar set for the value. So if we were to change that to a quarter note, then notice that our grid has changed and we have these four subdivisions within our bars now. Now, if I come back to bar, you can see that those are not there, but we'll come back to the quarter note setting and then we can just click and drag. And now you can see that that is snapping to quarter notes. Now, what if we wanna set a loop around this area here? And you may want to just set up a loop to record your drums in the first place and just record your bass kick on the first pass, your snare on the second pass, your hats on the third, and so on. We can set up a loop by pressing control and clicking in the ruler there. That sets our left locator. We can hold down alt and click in the ruler to set our right locator. And if you notice down below, we have left and right. These are going to show the positions of these uh, locators. So if I were to hover and use my mouse wheel, then we can change that by using the mouse wheel as well. And we can activate our loop. This is our loop here by clicking once. We can also use the letter L on our keyboard or the forward slash on our numeric keypad. So now I'll press one on the numeric keypad to take our song position cursor to the beginning of our loop and we want to be sure that we do have this blue border around the area of what we're currently working on so and that'll make a bit more sense when we move to the rack in a second here but by pressing one we can come to the beginning of the loop two we come to the end if we use the decimal on our numeric keypad we come to the beginning of our song i'll press the space bar to play back i'm going to take this volume of our click track down by using this level here Okay, and so that wasn't actually as horrible as I thought it was gonna be as far as playing back with a lot of latency on my uh, system here right now. But one thing that we do have available to us within Reason is the uh, cue record, so we can activate that. And upon recording, then Reason is going to automatically quantize your MIDI data based on whatever setting that you have here. 
And this is going to be independent of the value that you have set for your snap. Okay, now in order to edit our MIDI data, we can always double click on this clip. And now we are taken to our individual notes. And so we can navigate within the sequencer and within the editor here by using this bar down below. So if we click and drag and hold, we can move to the left or right. We can also hold down shift and use our mouse wheel to move left or right. Then if we grab, we have the hand in the center here. Now if we come to the corners, we have the double arrows. We can then use those to zoom out or zoom in. But we can see that we have our MIDI data here and we open up in a drum edit mode. So if you're someone who prefers to work with a piano roll, then you do have that option. So if we click this icon here in the upper right corner, we can choose key edit. And then as you can see, we have our piano roll. And of course you can audition your drum sounds there. We can also choose a Rex edit, which is going to be active when we're working with say the Dr. Octo Rex but we're gonna come back to the drum edit mode for the moment. And then in this way, we can actually see the names of the pads that we're working with in Kong. So if I F6 and come to the rack, we can rename, say this BD1 and call that bass drum, press enter, F7 to come back to our sequencer. Now we can see that that says bass drum down below there. Now, since this performance wasn't spot on, we can always quantize after the fact if we don't want to use the Q record. And the easiest way to do that would be to use Control A and then select all of the notes. And then we can press quantize down below here. Now, it may not have moved them exactly where we want, but we'll just see. So it's not too bad, just, you know, you'll want to adjust these settings when you're quantizing um, and you'll get a feel for this as you move along in producing music. Now, one other area to notice here when you're working with your individual MIDI data is that if I select a note here, you see we have an expect inspector at the very top that's going to show our note position, its length, what note it is. It's on, this is on C1 and its velocity. So we can make adjustments up above here. So if I were to click on the velocity and put in 50% or 50 and then press enter, we can see that our velocity has changed here. We can also change it manually within this lane by pressing W to access our pencil tool and then drawing, click hold and then adjust like so. And just notice that the shade of our, that red changes to show the intensity or velocity levels the deeper the red, the higher the velocity. And while we're here, if I were to draw in a second note here, and even a third one, if you ever have a crowded space with, in drums particular, or piano parts, and you wanna make adjustments to the velocity of one single note, but you've got all three, just press Q to activate the arrow tool, and then select the particular one that you'd like to adjust. And then we'll press W to access the pencil tool and hold down shift. And then in that way, we are only adjusting that one highlighted MIDI note. Now I'll press Q to activate the arrow tool again. And we also can come to the MIDI notes, drag to the right to extend that out, which doesn't really matter so much for this, this particular Tom, I think it is. Yeah, Tom. Um, and of course we can drag anywhere we'd like, and this is going to snap to whatever your quantize value is set to. And if you want to move it freely, just press S to deactivate your snap, and then you can move this around wherever you'd like. So when we're using the sequencer, we do have a few tools that are available to us, and these are basically married to the QWERTY keys on our QWERTY keyboard. So they go in sequence. Q is the arrow tool. W is the pencil tool. E is the eraser tool. R is the razor. T is the mute tool. Y is the magnifying tool. And U is the hand tool. And so these serve different functions. 
and we won't go into all of them, but if I were to select the razor tool, then we can do things like cutting that note into two, for instance. And of course, with a lot of these tools, whatever your snap value is set to, or whether even snap is on or off, will have an influence on how they behave within the sequencer. I'm gonna press Q to bring back the arrow tool, and let's escape out of that editor, and F6 to come back to our rack, and F3 to open our browser, and let's actually work with, say, a melody or some chords. So say we'd like a nice pad, we can come to the instruments, and let's bring in the grain, which is one of the new instruments introduced in Reason 10. Now this should be immediately ready to go right out of the gate. Okay, and so this is a grain sample manipulator, and this sound that we just heard is actually uh, being achieved through manipulating different samples that have been brought in. And just really quickly, this arrow here, if I click this, we can hear the original sample and what that sounds like. A bit loud. Um, and so we have that. from that uh, original sample, which is pretty cool. Now I'm gonna navigate up. We can move up folders at a time by clicking the up arrow, and then I'm gonna come to the pads, and then let's choose a pad here. And when you're doing this, you wanna be sure that you are in browse mode for you know the grain. We've got this orange bar up top and the orange box here on our uh, browse patch area. The up and down arrows will move between the patches there, but a simpler way to do this is to just use your up and down arrows on your computer keyboard. And then this is one of the things that I really love about Reason. It's a simple thing, but a lot of times I'll have my drum track playing if I started with drums, and then I can come to the pads and then just use the down arrow. to navigate to get to the sound that fits what I am looking for. Okay, so let's come back up one level and then I'm gonna come to the plucks, bells, and stabs. Okay, and then, so let's go ahead and record that. Remember the asterisk on your numeric keypad or the control plus return. I'll press spacebar to stop and then F7 so that we can come to the sequencer and take a look at what we've recorded. And we can see our individual MIDI notes there. And as we saw with the drums, we can double click and then let me F3 and close out the browser for a second. Now with this, we're immediately taken to the piano roll because we're working with a synth. And we can just scroll to see the information that we've recorded. And again, we can click on an individual note, see what that note is, its velocity, length, position. And if I were to hold down shift and select another note, we have these equal signs that become available. And so if we'd like a group of notes to be of the same length, then we can just click on that equal sign and it's going to adjust those and set them to be of equal length. Now, that was hard to see because they were pretty close to begin with, but um, I'll shrink that down. Hold shift and select this one 
and then the length, we've got the equal. So now they're matched. And this is just one of the little handy tools that are available to us within the inspector up above, and that can apply to the actual note, you know, uh, or the velocity. And then down below, we can edit the velocity here, as we saw. And you probably wouldn't want to do this with a uh, synth patch, but one thing to, that I want to mention is we can actually, I'll press W to bring up the pencil tool. We can hold down control and we have these crosshairs where we can create a velocity ramp, which could be good for drum parts. So just know that that is available. Also, if you have certain areas of automation or areas of the synth or whatever you're working with, whether it be Kong or Grain or Europa, that you would like to automate and you prefer to draw it in manually versus recording it live, we can actually add different automations by clicking on this icon here. And then we have access to all the different parameters that are available for uh, modulation. So if we come to the amp pan, we can see that that is added. The pencil tool is already active, so I'll just simply draw in some automation. And um, let's F6 and come to the rack. I'm gonna rewind a bit by pressing four on my numeric, numeric keypad, playback. See that panning there. And so we also could have just entered into record mode, start making adjustments, and it's going to uh, automatically create that automation for us as well. And then also you could link this knob to a controller, say a pot on your MIDI controller, and then do that with a hardware device versus having to click and hold with your mouse. Now, one other thing that I meant to mention in the beginning is if you don't actually have a MIDI controller, you can press F4 and then access on-screen keys here. And then with these, you can use your mouse to trigger the devices, and it will actually record this. Uh, we can also use the computer keys, so if I click that, then you can use your QWERTY keyboard to play the devices. And we have an area for velocity, so if you have variation set to none, whatever value you have set here is the MIDI notes will go in at that velocity value. If we set to light, medium, or heavy, this is going to vary the velocity levels as you're playing back on your QWERTY keyboard. So just know that this, this tool is available to you by pressing F4 or by clicking the keys here. And just below that, we have a groove sequencer here that can help add a bit of uh, uh, different rhythms and uh, feel to your drum tracks available to you below the keys. And I'll just click that to hide that. Now, what if we would like to add an effect to our recorded part? I'll F3 and open up the browser. We'd want to come to the effects there. And now we have the effects palette opened up and say we want to add some reverb to this grain that we've recorded. Well, we would simply We've got the RV7000 that we can use, and so we can just drag that directly below the device we'd like to add it to. And if I tab around to the back, then we can see that automatically the audio out of grain has been routed to the input on our reverb, and the output of the reverb is going to our mix device channel. So now if I tab around to the front, and I'm just gonna trigger this with my MIDI keyboard. First, we need to direct the MIDI there. So I'll select, be sure that we've got the gray arrow. Now, if I were to bypass that reverb, So we can hear quite clearly how that's uh, working. And with the RV7000 in particular, we can click this arrow here to open up the programmer and make some adjustments to different parameters for this uh, convolution reverb device.
Now, another method you may want to use is creating effect sends. And so if you would like to do that, say maybe save on processing power or keep all of your sounds kind of in the same space, we can then just create one instance of the RV7000 and then, then send our instruments to it. So I'm gonna actually delete that out for the moment, come up to the master section, and then here is where we want to come to effects. I'll add that reverb back below, directly below the, uh, the master section there. And then I'll press F5, come to the mixer, and then we can see that our all plate spread is in the effects section here. So now on on our grain channel here, we all we would need to do then is activate that send and we've got it on our reverb here and so you've got a lot of different controls here for making adjustments and you can have up to eight different devices that you can use on all of the channels that you have set up within your mixer now, the mixer may seem a bit intimidating. Let me close out the browser. But just know that we can, we've got these grouped by sections. So we have, we have our fader, we have inserts, EQ, effects, um, and dynamics. But we can hide or show each of these by clicking on these buttons here. So as I click, we're making that mixer smaller vertically and taking it down to just the faders, and we can even hide those as well. And then we can choose to hide individual sections if we may want to work on those. And we can bring them all back by clicking. And again, if it seems intimidating, just know that once you understand one channel, then the same controls are going to be applied to all of the channels that you have within the mixer. Also another feature of the uh, mixer that is useful and is in other areas within Reason as well is these two buttons, Sequencer and Rack. So if you're working on a particular channel and you'd like to say see that what that MIDI data or performance or audio looks like in the track, we can just click on the Sequence button and then we're taken to that particular track within the Sequencer. And if I F6 to maximize the Rack, then we can see that we have those same buttons here in the rack. So if I'd like to access the channel in the mixer for this Kong, then I can press the mix button and we then have that flash and it highlights our Kong kit channel within the mixer. And I have no idea how long I've been going here, but I do have one last area that I would like to talk about and that's working with audio, uh, slicing audio and working with uh, samples. So if you're someone who works with a lot of samples and this could be useful for you to see, I will F7 and open up the, let me actually go back to the rack and I'm going to delete our Kong out. Now, when it says delete all in group, we're deleting out, this is basically including the mix channel device. It's asking if you want to include that. Otherwise, if you delete selected only, it's going to delete the Kong and then you're going to be left with the mix channel device. So if that's what you want to do, then just delete selected only. Otherwise, we're going to delete all in the group, okay, including the reverb there. And we'll get rid of our grain as well. And I'll F3 to open up the browser and come to this little favorites area that I created for, for this tutorial, aptly named for Tut. I'm going to come to a folder of some very old tracks of mine and F7 to open up the sequencer. I'm going to grab, say this one here, and just bring that in. And Reason is going to analyze this audio as it brings it in. I'm on a super slow computer, so yours is probably gonna go 
faster than that. Let me go ahead and stop that autoplay. And let me cue to get the arrow tool and just pull this forward a bit. Okay, so we've got our audio track that we just bought it, brought in. And say we want to sample, let's play this back real quick. I'm going to take the click track off. So say we would like to sample that and get those drums there. Um, first, I'm going to pull in the beginning here. I'm going to turn the snap off by pressing S to really get close on that initial transient. I'll turn it back on, pull it to the beginning of bar two. And I think I wanted to, how far do I want in here? So we'll cut at here. So I'll press R to bring up the razor tool. Just make that cut. Q to bring up the arrow tool. Select that last portion, delete it out. And then now we've got this clip that we would like to use and get those samples out of there. So what we could do is, and just know that we have three different edit modes here. So we've got a slice edit, a pitch edit, and comp edit. We'll start from the right. Comp edit allows us to do some comp editing. And this is going to be useful if you want to set up a loop and record different audio takes. You can then pull different pieces from each take and create a composite audio track of the best parts. Now I'll escape and that's how we get out of there. The other mode that we have is pitch edit. So then we open up our pitch editor where we can then make some adjustments to our audio in this way. Let me F3 to close out the browser. And so we have this available to us here. And we can get out of there by pressing escape. But what we want to take a look at is slice edit. And so Reason is going to create some, place some slice markers within our uh, sample that we brought in. And we can actually, if there's too many or we would like to remove some, we can simply just click, press delete on our keyboard. We can also, um, if we wanted to kind of change, do some time stretching, we can drag and it's going to alter that. But I'm going to control Z to put that back as it was. Because what I'd really like to show is that we can just right click here, come to bounce, and then bounce clip to Rex loop. Now our browser is going to open up and we can see our new Rex loop that we created from the sample. I'm going to escape out of the editor. Go ahead and delete that audio out. F6 to come to the rack. Let us come to our instruments. Bring in the Dr. Octo. I'm going to right click that and reset the device. And then, if you remember when we were taking a look at the browser, we had song samples, which is going to show you any audio that you brought into the song or recorded. So if I click the song samples, we should have our Rex file here, and here it is, the dance. Now we can just click, hold, and drag that onto our Dr. Octo. Let me go ahead and, okay, that's stopped now. Now this is going to be mapped across our keys automatically. So now I can just use my keys on my MIDI controller. So these are all of our individual
samples. So I could even come down to say this slice here, reverse it. We can activate slice edit mode. Pitch it up. Pitch it down. We've got panning, level, decay, reverse, filter frequency, alt, out, changing outputs. So there's a ton of options here for working with samples and you can see how quickly that we were able to get this done and bring it into where we can play it back, the individual slices on our MIDI controller. Now, that was a basic drum sample, so if you are working with a more complicated piece, you may have to spend a bit more time working with those slice markers, but as you can see, it can be a really quick process to work with samples within reason. And so with that, this is gonna be pretty long, I have a feeling, I feel like I've been talking for over an hour. We're gonna wrap up here, and I hope that, you know, if you're just getting started off, you've learned some useful tools to get you up and running and getting the songs in your head out, in, uh, out for the world. So thanks for watching. Take care.